This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now when discussing adjusting the volume, obviously that's going to be dictated by what you want to do. You can either adjust the volume on some of the background music or adjust the volume on the ambient noise. If it's on a separate track, you can also adjust the volume on a per clip basis or on a per track basis. And we've discussed this a little bit before, but let's take the entire subject matter of volume and take a closer look at it. And of course, we'll go to our audio mixer. And we're not concerned right now for any special effects, so let's go ahead and collapse that portion of the audio mixer and just take a look at what's here. Now, you'll remember from previous lessons that audio one on the audio mixer means that we're adjusting the volume on track audio one, audio two, track audio two, and so on and so on, all the way down to 15, 20, 25, if you want that many audio tracks. However, we have not discussed really in a whole lot of detail how to adjust the volume on individual clip within the clip, and that's done with the yellow, what they call volume rubber bands. We'll get into that in just one second. The other thing that we want to kind of take a look at is how everything is going to mix together. And I've purposely put this sequence together to kind of mix things up as a demonstration of how you're going to adjust volume in a number of different ways. Now we've got this music track here on audio number two. It's nice bucolic piano, kind of goes like this. We can hear how that sounds. And it, this piece of music also has some sound effects mixed in to it. Also, we have sound effects from ambient noise on this audio clip, which of course is synced with the various clips of video that we have up here. So we kind of want the birds and the wind in the trees and the laughter of children. We want that in there, but we also want the sound effects that are in the music track. And then obviously we want the different segments of conversation audio that we have with Shane Krogan discussing his role in the organization. So we got to mix all that together and it's got to sound right. So how do you do that? Well, I think that we've got the track on audio one pretty much done the way we want it to be, but we can adjust the entire track by going this way to increase the volume or this way to decrease the volume. That's a very straightforward process. Here's your balance control. And of course we have different audio on the left and right tracks of this clip. And we adjust the balance with this adjustment right here. Now the other way we can adjust volume, as we have seen right here in the music, and we're going to be concerned with track audio 2 and track audio 3, and we've got to mix that up. We really can't see how all this is coming together by just looking at it down here. Let's give it a listen and see if everything is as we want it to be. They're, the kids are not at home playing Nintendo or video games or, or listening to the radio. And of course that one is out of sync. You know, a lot of why I'm where I'm at today is because my parents took the time to... And so is that one. ...to bring me out here and to show me what this is all about. So I have to thank my mother and my father. They're the ones that instilled this drive in now, me to This one is not as bad as and the other ones, but have... it's still not as good as we need it. So let's adjust all these. And we really can't tell what we need to do by looking at it in that compressed wide view. So let's zoom in on this just a bit so that we can get a visual representation of where we are. And indeed we can see. Now keep in mind these keyframe markers right here. This is kind of the pivot point for the yellow rubber band volume control. And of course, if we grab it in the middle between the two, we can come up and down. But we don't really need that right now. But I think what we are going to do is expand our view on this. So let's go to maximum frame so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to bring this view down here so that we can really kind of open things up and look at what it is we actually need to do. Now, one little thing I want to point out to you, there are two ways to put these what I call keyframe markers on the volume rubber bands. And that is take the timeline marker, and wherever you want it to be inserted, line it up, which I'm going to do here for demonstration, and see right here this little keyframe marker right there? Just click on that and you can see that it appears right there. And then you can use it to pivot, you know, and move things around however you want it. Now, if you want to get rid of it, see it's not showing up as a black dot right here, 
This will take you to the previous keyframe. It doesn't have to move much, but when it goes black, you click on it and then it'll take it out. The other way is to hold down the control key, just put the cursor on the point where you want to put the keyframe marker, click on it and it'll come up. Click to the closest keyframe and then click on the black keyframe and it'll go away. Let's do it again. There it is. We want to get rid of it. And it's gone and it's just as easy as that. Now 99% of the time you will see me use this little gizmo to place the audio markers because I want most of the time to sync up the audio and the video. Obviously, especially important when you're syncing up the shot of Shane talking and of course his voice track. So what we're going to do is move this kind of over here. And notice the audio and the video are linked, so they're going to move together. Now I'm going to move this control over here, this one kind of right there, and I'm just kind of guessing at it at this point. I'm just visually guessing at it, and then we'll listen to it to see if it's going to work or not. So let's give that a listen and see if that doesn't sound a little better. They're, the kids are not at home playing Nintendo or video games or, or listening to the radio. Okay, much, much better. Now let's take a look at this one and do the same thing. Let's move this over to here. Move this one over here. And the angle of the slope dictates obviously how fast or slowly the sound fades in or fades out. I think that's pretty straightforward. You can, you can get that. I'm going to push this back up here even with these other two clips. Take this and move it here. Take this and move it here. Looking at this, I've got a pause in the music right here, and I think the music would sound better without Shane's conversation over it. Plus, too, we have a run of silence here, which I would rather have Shane discussing something over the silence in the music for the most part. So we're going to move that over here. And then of course I think all we have to do here is just move this clip over. We don't really have a whole lot that we need to do with this. So move this maybe just a smidgen over there. Of course this has to come way over. Now I think we have everything adjusted. Let's see how it syncs up. We've heard the first one and it looks okay. Let's give a listen to the second clip and see how that's going to sound. You know, a lot of why I'm where I'm at today is because my parents took the time to, to bring me out here and to show me what this is all about. Much, much better. So I have to thank my mother and my father. They're the ones that instilled this drive in me to protect the forest. And if I have that effect on one of these young kids, um, to where in their life, when they're my age at 47, that they'll be doing the same thing, carrying this torch. I couldn't ask for a better legacy. And not bad, except let's just bring these in a little bit to start the mix process a little sooner. And I'll move this over here, and we'll bring this in. Kind of get things changing a little tighter. Now let's give it another listen and see what we have here. They're, the kids are not at home playing Nintendo or video games or, or listening to the radio. You know, a lot of why I'm where I'm at today is because my parents took the time to, to bring me out here and to show me what this is all about. So I have to thank my mother and my father. They're the ones that instilled this drive in me to protect the forest. And if I have that effect on one of these young kids um, to where in their life, when they're my age at 47, that they'll be doing the same thing and carrying this torch, I couldn't ask for a better legacy. Much, much better, and I think that's something that we'll keep. So you can see how, you know, things kind of all have to come together and mix and adjust and tweak and, and all. And these little rubber bands and these keyframe markers make that process so easy. You have a visual representation of where things are. 
superimposed over the waveform, which gives you a little bit of a visual guidance as to where you want things to begin and end. And I think the adjustments that we made on this audio make the sequence much, much more effective. And so that is basically how you do volume. And it's really, really easy to do. And we'll repeat once again how important it is to get the audio right in your project. It'll make all the difference in the world between being a success and a failure, I strongly believe.